Hello and welcome to the Crew 42 coverage of the Hall of Fame Classic out here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I'm super excited for this event earlier in the spring of 2021 and we are at Ashimo for round one and on the commentator's mic with me, I have my good friend Matt Jackson. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing really well, Zach. Thanks for having me and good to be back to the Michigan Disc Golf community. First off, we have Dave Felberg, 2008 world champion and Bart Kowalski, I hope I said that right, and I know he's from Dayton, Ohio, and a Discmania sponsored athlete. For sure, and we have Frank Smith rounding out the last card here. He is was on our first coverage ever for Crew 42 back in 2019, so good to have him back. He's recently been sponsored by Discraft Underground. Excited to have him back. We are at a very, very special course to me. This is kind of my stomping grounds and kind of where I grew up, and I'm really excited to watch these guys play. Hole one here, Matt, what do we got? We have a 347 foot hole. It is slightly downhill. The The average and most common shot is gonna be a fairway driver kind of driven flat that goes straight in a slight hyzer finish. But I've seen from the, the all famous Andy Marwe to even a mid range. Yeah, depending on your arm, you can get it down there for sure. You just really need to hit this first gap to give yourself a look. It looks like David put this one a little far right, hits that tree, and it's going to kick him off to the left. He's going to have to scramble for his first par of the day. The thing about Ashmo Park, too, is we'll mention it now and we'll mention it on every hole, is you don't want to be left, you don't want to be right. It really forces you to control your Frisbee's speed and the angle in which it lands because bogeys are very, very common and very easy out here. For sure, as Bart shows that perfectly, putting himself inside circle. Um, there on hole one. Nice shot from him and Frank trying to follow suit here, hugging that right side a little too much. He's going to be knocked down early, but he'll have a putt at par there. You might notice that we only have three people on our card this particular event that was not planned. We had Reed Friskura on the docket for this tournament, but unfortunately his alarm did not ring loud enough. So we unfortunately missed out on Reed Friskura shooting super, super hot here at Oshmo, but we'll see him at the next event. You can clearly see Feldberg did not hit the initial gap on, t on the hole one, and you see he's already scrambling for par. And nearly puts it Ooh. in. I mean, what that's a a, yeah, that's a spectacular putt. Dave is a world-class champion, uh, 2008 world title winner, I believe. Yep. Um, I think he went out in this area. I don't remember for sure. Was it Kalamazoo Battle Creek? I'd have to go back. I don't remember. I don't know my disc golf history as well as I should. It's Frank there with a good bid there, circle's edge, but not quite able to get that low enough. It looks like Bart's going to take the early lead here as long as he can convert this putt. Yes, it does so nicely. That's a, and, again, the first one, about three holes, you kind of want to get ahead of the game at Oshawa because the teeth come starting about hole five. You're going to – pars feel like a birdie. For sure. And that's, I think you said it really well. The very beginning and the very end of this course are where you get to attack. I would say somewhere between holes 5 to like 14 is like damage control. If you can get away with a birdie, you're stealing strokes on people. So we got our first card, first hole in the books, headed to hole 2 now. So we're now we're going back up the hill slightly, 347 feet. What are you doing here, Matt, for your shot? I think a lot of athletes are going to throw the turnover backhand. They're going to force an Annie that kind of holds that right turning. But if you have it, which 350 feet on a hyzer flip forehand is a tough shot, but it is a very friendly shot for this hole. Sure. I've seen Marweed thrown that plenty of times, and it's definitely the shape of it. But a lot of people struggle to get that 350 power a little uphill and hold that angle. Definitely. So most athletes will go with a turnover backhand, which you see Bart doing here. Yeah, I think this is a flippy mid or fairway from him. I want to say it's a fairway, but it's going to hug that left side too much. He's going to be on that left fairway, hopefully not too far in. Um, you'll notice if you've ever played Oshmo that there's never, I don't think I've ever heard of OB, as Frank is very fortunate kick back in the fairway there. Um, but because, like you said earlier, if you're in the woods, it's a natural OB stroke. You sometimes can lose yeah. strokes. Amen to that. And to go back to bar and – Dave and even uh, Frank, you're going to see, I think, like the, the FD, the neutral oh, mid-range, or neutral fairway, I'm sorry, to, to throw this shot. David putting it under the basket could not be better result for him there. We do only play this course once for this event, so uh, these guys are going to be looking to take advantage of this course as quickly as possible. 
Frank with looks like a zone up shot there. Yep, absolutely. That's his blue zone. Puts him 25, circles maybe edge. circles edge, yeah. Uh -huh. um, hopefully he'll be able to convert that par. To give you an idea, too, early, I mean, early in the days of Ashmo, even par is, has averaged very close to 1,000 rated, probably 990. Yes. And it feels like, depending on how thick the foliage is, it should be over 1,000. Mm. Definitely. Frankie? Yeah, circle's edge, it looks like. Yeah, just a touch low on the left side there, but he's going to have to settle for a bogey here. And like you said, even though you want to attack these early holes, the bogeys will sneak up on you really quick, a little off on the fairway, and you can find yourself losing strokes really quickly. Definitely. Ashmo, definitely test your mental your mental strength. Bart here is going to be tapping in his par. A good save from him. He didn't. He luckily didn't kick too far into the woods, so he had a nice little easy upshot. And Dave with one of the easiest tap-ins on this hole I've seen in a long time. What a shot. Yeah. What a shot. World champion for sure. As we head over now to hole three, one of the luckier holes on this course, Matt, what do we got? Definitely. Hole three is interesting. At 340 feet, you're going to see a jail of trees. It's basically what you're aiming at. It is a blind shot. The secret is to push a high speed to an overstable fairway as straight as you can until it loses speed. And you're going to want to kind of get that skip. It's going to be a low shot. And you, again, you can see the jail of trees here, which anything inside the circle is a bonus. Most shots finish high, pin high right. Absolutely. This is definitely a bonus birdie in my mind. I've had, I've hit it once in my life, and I'll claim that to the day I die. A bonus for sure. The best shot is actually sawed off hyzer that you let go kind of early, and it kind of cuts through the trees. That's going to be your best shot. You see Dave Feldberg. Let's see if he can. Now, unfortunately, um, you you know, I said it earlier where this coverage is from earlier this spring. David, a little unfortunate, hits an early tree, kicks left, but he should be able to get up and down from there. Um, our footage actually went to kind of exchange hands with people because we were working with some new people, and I lost the footage, and by the time I got it back, some of it was corrupted. So some of the catch cam footage here in hole three and four, we're going to lose out on that. So unfortunately, we don't see Bart, but you can see his reaction there. Almost hit that corner there, hits an early tree. He's also going to have an upshot. Uh, so we'll lose the catch cam, but it will be back by, I think, uh, hole six, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we'll see that come back. And Frank also hitting that gap, but I think he pushes deep, yeah, yeah. which is the one thing you really don't want to do if you're trying to turn that corner because you can land up right where he's at right now, which is a bad spot. Um, but it is it is common, and you, you're seeing the footage right now of Ostromo. This is a very old course in the sense of disc golf. I mean, we're talking, I think, 97 is when it was put in. Mm -hmm. Um this rough on the right was never like this developing. You know, you missed right and straight. It was kind of an instant bogey. So the common miss here is what I'm saying. It's going to be high right. You're going to push it right. It's going to be a little bit more open than the left side. Yeah, David actually having an open look there for two. Frank having to scramble. Um, and it looks like Bart's also going to get a look at this. Taking a look at the stats right now. Three is the first hole to play over par on the day. And, oh, man, Bart nearly taking advantage of a bonus birdie there yeah we had seven birdies on the day on this hole and ooh, dave sneaking that one in let's not forget that these baskets are from 97 as well you know you're not quite sure what's going to happen when you hit those change Yes, you're absolutely correct. Spit outs are very common. And huge shout out to the fact that we are getting updated baskets at this course for 2022. Super excited. Very excited that. about that. Thank you, Larry LeBon and the Kalamazoo Ace Crew, who has a large league and the love that they put into this course. It is a true gem, and I appreciate all the hard work that goes into it. Absolutely. And we move over to hole four now, 446 feet. Now, the par for the tournament, we're all par three. So some of the par fours and stuff we had to kind of interpret because we're going to hit some holes that are definite par fours and fives. Um, this was one of them. This is a tweener. Uh, it's kind of hard to uh, attack this. If you hit that left gap with a turnover, I think it's you can get to the basket, but it's a really tough shot. Most people are going to play that right gap, kind of a half layup almost into the fairway, and then get an upshot towards the basket from there. I'm definitely no world champion, but I will tell you that a three is going to be strokes on folks. For sure. We have Dave out in the fairway there. 
And again, very common play here is just to throw it out to that right side, let the disc hyzer on its own, and man, Bart getting an unlucky break there, hitting that last tree you have to avoid. He's going to kick right, and that stuff on the right side is really thick. He looks like he held on to that a little bit too long. Yeah, and Frank does the same thing, kicks, kicks right, and then it pushes all the way back to the left fairway. Luckily, he's not very far in. He's going to have this zone shot. As his approach, and there we go. We got the catch cam back now. Look, we even got it two holes earlier than what I remember. So, a um, little short there. He's going to be in the fairway, and Bart looking to just kind of scramble here. And Bart was not in a good spot. See a couple people hiding in the woods watching the car today. We actually had a pretty good showing uh, to here to watch Dave uh, Felberg today. So, have people in the crowd. Bart's going to be circle's edge in that bush, see if he can save his three. Frank unable to save his from distance, but he did pipe those trees, though. I did just do some research, and David Felberg is the 2008 world champion, and it was Battle Creek, Kalamazoo, in which he conquered. I, I thought it Ostromo was. Being, Ostromo being one of those courses. So he's very familiar with the track, and, I mean, again, it takes consistent control and speed like angle control oh. speed control with your frisbees to attack ashtamo bart nearly saving that one thank you matt for getting that information mm -hmm. i'm i'm glad we oh oh my you see his Ooh. reaction come out of his hand an early like just miss slip out of his hand like super uncharacteristic something he was not expecting he's gonna have to walk away with a four there instead of the three and there were in fact zero twos on this hole mm -hmm. for the event a um, couple good looks I heard, but nothing that fell as we go into hole five, which is arguably one of my favorite holes in the long layouts. Matt, what do we got? What a gem we have here. 524 feet. It's pretty flat. If anything, slightly up here, but I wouldn't even classify it slightly. You want to push a backhand as straight as you can. And I'm talking, you need to carry at least 300 feet of distance in order to even see around the corner. Mm -hmm. You'll see a lot of athletes throwing a high speed, like Heiser flip drive. And then you'll see the Andrew Marreads of the world. They'll throw a forehand because there's an open pocket on the right side, about 330 feet forward, mm -hmm. which gives you a chance to kind of see around the corner. You can see where I'm standing in the fairway in the background there, and that's really right where I'm standing is where you want your disc to start fading left if you're trying to get an aggressive shot towards that corner. Bart is one of these players who kind of has the power to actually potentially kind of get that skip shot to attack the basket area. And when he's saying attack the basket, I mean, the best shots in the world are going to get you to 50, 60 feet, yes. in my opinion. Deep circle, too. I agree. You will not get any closer than that. I think the only way you can get closer is if they like freshly mow it so you can actually play for big skip. But unfortunately, this is, you can see kind of in the grass here, it is not uh, mowed super low right now. It's pretty pretty normal for Ashmar right here. It's good condition, but not ideal for the best skip shots. And Bart kind of went into the right side. He's going to try to save himself from that area. Frank looking like he's turning the corner really well, and that's, you know... Top I mean, that's a mash. Yeah, that's, that's a, a mash. Huge shot. 450, easy. Um, just flat to Heiser there and around the corner, give himself a two look. Oh, yeah, Bart's in jail here on the right side. He's going with a and roller. And again, a, a very classic Ashima hole in the sense of how straight can you throw your Frisbee and how well can you control its speed and the angle in which it lands to not finish you left or right. And he is unfortunately landed right side, then left side now, trying to throw the roller out. But luckily, this next one, he kind of punches it through the Ashmo Woods, and he's going to be in circle uh, for his four look. Dave looking to get himself in circle for a birdie opportunity here. He's going to go deep, turnover, and clean. Nice, Dave. Super nice little forehand flick there. Frank with the deep, uh, probably 90 feet, two look. And I'm certain he probably wanted to run that, but in his head is probably you know what? hard to convince a, yourself. A For sure. And a tab in three is, I'm telling you, stroke on a high percentage of the field. Absolutely. In fact, this hole played as, uh, let me double check, as the hardest hole according to par three um, on the day at plus 0.97. So almost just a true par four here for the field. So absolutely strokes on folks taking that, um, taking that three there. Most Michiganders will 
come to Ashmo Longs and playing everything as a par three. So mm -hmm. these pars are slightly different. Yeah, classic Michigan par. Everything is three. That's you know old tradition Michigan stuff, and uh, I love it. But let's be honest, that's a definite par four uh, in tournament definitely. play. Hole six here is a must get, I think, for if you're trying to compete for this tournament. One of the easier holes, 221 feet. Uh, I think a traditional play, probably a backhand putter turnover, real soft, or if you have the touch, maybe a forehand, Matt, what would you do? I would agree. The forehand's gonna get you a little bit right of the pin. The turnover backhand is ideal. This is a, a breath, like a like fresh relief in a sense, a 220 foot turnover shot in the, mm -hmm. in the course of Ashmel, but you know, she still has her teeth, which is very, very interesting. Yep, absolutely. And Dave does a nice job throwing the the backhand, puts it nice in circle. Frank trying to play that forehand, punches through. He'll be in the open. It'll be a long look for his birdie, but uh, unfortunately kept it a little wide. And it looks like Bart's going to go to the backhand as well. Backhand opens it up a little bit more. The forehand, in a sense, needs to be sawed off. It needs to be a sharp hyzer. Like kind of skips you around the corner or moves you around the corner when the backhand kind of glides around the corner, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Frank here from maybe 65 feet or so, deep circle two, and is going to miss his target left. He's going to have a comeback putt there. Definitely one you want to get. Plays as one of the easier holes on the day as Dave come here is going to tap out first. Frank's farther out, but Dave's going to tap in so that everyone can kind of move out of the line of sight as we come our way back towards the basket. Tell you, this is more than you're going to want on hole six for par. Absolutely. He's got to keep that. Ooh. Mm. Good putt. Good hey, putt. It's still a par. Like I said, pars are good at Ashtamo. Bart here looking to take one. His birdie and cat high right side, but it stays in for him. That's going to be a nice birdie for him. And. Bart and Dave are on a decent pace so far. Maybe another birdie or two would put them in a better spot, but they're okay with two down as we head into one of the more difficult holes. Um, true par four, hole seven. Matt, you got to break this down for us. At 500 feet, um, you're definitely not going to attack for the eagle. Uh, the first shot from the longs is a placement shot, in my opinion, around the corner, just to get you in the middle of the fairway, which is going to allow you to see the basket. And then the second shot is where you're going to attack. It's even the best shots from the longs is going to put you about 300 to 280 feet away from the, the pin, mm -hmm. and then you need to execute the second shot. Uh, I think in our Kalamazoo Open coverage with Chris Davis when he won that in 2019, he, uh, I think he was able to get all the way up to about 200 feet, which is probably one of the most insane shots I've ever seen around this corner and recklessly aggressive. But um, we'll have to see how these guys kind of handle it. And Dave, pipe in the line. Pretty, yeah, that's pretty standard right there. Good shot. That's perfect. I'm assuming a mid-range putter just to control the speed. Yeah. If you go too fast, you're going to be on those left woods, and that's a no bueno. This is my play here, trying to throw a forehand big and hyzer and just let it flop. This is a little inside, so he's going to be next to those inside trees right there, but um, hopefully he'll be able to have a line towards that basket down the fairway there. This is my play as well as a forehand with actually like a – control speed approach this just to land myself in the middle okay the first shot you don't really want to attack on it's the second shot in which you need to execute 300 feet to the basket and don't finish left don't finish right it gotta kind of carry the disc as straight as it can oh no and frank nearly piping that fairway cleanly hitting the very last tree there at the edge of the circle and it's going to leave himself short but he'll have a look for birdie from there Bart looking to do the same. He looks like he's got an open gap. He needs to carry this, and that will be in circle. He'll have a birdie look as well. Oh, yeah, nice nice inside circle there, 20, 25 feet. And this is, this is really ideal here. Ideal on the left side. Yeah, let yourself have that room, throw something stable, let it come back left, if you're a righty. Mm -hmm. If you're a forehand player like Andrew Marweed or like yourself, you probably want to be a little more in the middle. That's a great shot from David. Let's see if we can get our first star frame of the day here. Circle's edge, slightly uphill putt. Yes, absolutely. Oh, no. Just off the mark on the am side. A little too low for it to stick. It's going to spit out. He's going to have to settle for par again. Definitely. Dave for birdie? Yes, sir. Band. With his heart. I think it had, that disc had Obama on it, too. 
So every time he threw it and it, like something good happened, he'd say thank o- thanks Obama. So he's having a good time. And Bart, right, yeah, they're setting a pace here. Three down through seven holes is a pretty good pace. I would think that an, like a perfect round puts you at five down, but or four is really a dream round right at this point. But they are setting a pretty good pace so far for the card. Definitely not upset with it. Hole eight is another kind of like hole six, slightly harder than hole six at 270 feet. It is going to be a hyzer flip or a turnover forehand, which is actually a crazy shot, but land flip it up the flat let it slide up and we're gonna have a, our first slightly elevated basket on the brick blocks and mm-hmm. again you kind of you, you want this hole you don't want to miss it yeah it definitely plays as one of the easiest holes on the day in fact i think it's the second easiest hole or excuse me the easiest hole on the day according to par um so absolutely one you want to get i think the backhand uh righty backhand flip up putter is the best shot and dave's kind of showing us why as he hits the the well is what I like to call it, and he's got himself a nice inside circle putt there, 15 feet. The right edge of the fairway is a perfect aiming point. If you can like hug a hyzer on that right side, it's going to drift you right to the basket. This is looking really clean as well. Super and, clean. And nicked that last Ooh. tree. Welcome to Michigan. Yes. Maybe that's why Reed didn't show up. He, you know, he Maybe. loves his Michigan disc golf, though. Shout out to Reed. We still love you. Yeah, we, we miss him. Mm-hmm. Frank here. I think this is a zone, if I recall correctly. It's been a while, but and he hits the same tree Bart does. He's gonna have a long look as well. I think that's a common miss with a an overstable drive. Is you're gonna be on the left side of the, the pin. I kind of like the more neutral, the Heiser flip shot. To be honest. Mm-hmm. I agree, and there's no doubt about that one. Frank says, "Give me but that one." He looked. He never looked worried. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with his game plan then. So super clean from him. Bart here, tree a little in his way, but he's got an open enough look, and it's going to miss on that pro side. We're so close to that first star frame. Dave. Well, it's not, coming on, it's not coming on hole nine unless it's a par four. Well, I'm definitely making nine a par four. We'll get there. <laughs> oh, all right, fair enough. Good, good putt from Dave there. That's a good birdie. And again, oh, strokes. I didn't even see that. I just noticed in the background there, as Bart was putting, there was a disc that came into the woods, probably from hole seven, someone pushing a little too deep. Uh, hopefully that didn't end too badly for them. But we're heading to hole nine, well over 500 feet, way uphill. Matt, how are you going to break this one down? Oh, man, this tee shot is extremely intimidating. Um, you can see the, the rough on the right and left are no bueno. That dead tree that we just flew by with the drone is it's, you want to push that. You want to aim at that straight and land, I mean, let's say 20 to 50 feet past that, which is going to give you another shot to attack the pin. The second shot is crucial to this hole. Absolutely. We even had, back in 2019, I'm going to keep shouting that out because I keep thinking back to it. It's reminiscing all my favorite memories. We had someone that was so far up there, they almost had to look for two. It was crazy. That is massive. It's a huge shot, very aggressive. And the thing with Ashtamo is, you know, I, you know, I'll say that word recklessly aggressive. In Ashtamo, if you miss your line, even though you could throw it 550 feet and you could attack this, if you miss your line by the smallest amount, you'll find yourself 150 feet in the woods, taking two shots to get back in the fairway, really quickly. So it's, I mean, Ashtamo giveth and it taketh away. Definitely, it depends how she's feeling that day. Bang, Frank sneaking hey. on that right side, and he has smashed that to a perfect spot. That's a crush. That's all a 450 up the hill, easy. And Bart's another, like I said, he's a big power thrower. He's got lots of distance on him, and he is putting that also in an ideal position. Nice, easy gap on the left side for him to kind of pitch a shot from there. Dave actually in a pretty good spot. Definitely. Uh, special thing about hole nine is they have, the, you can see that jail of trees. It's just a cluster in the middle. Mm-hmm. There is a right path and a left path. So it doesn't matter if you're righty, lefty, forehand, backhand, dominant. There is a, a clear path to get to the basket. Absolutely. So Dave a little short on his upshot. I think, I'm think i going to say here Frank has got an easy three here. He's put himself pretty pretty close to under the basket. And this is a this is almost a look as well for a two here. Get in. Mm, what a what a throw, Bart. That would have been spicy. You know, it would anything like that on on coverage on Crew Forty Two is always a blessing. Absolutely, Dave from distance is gonna knock his down, 
And I think we're actually going to get our first star frame here. Hold nine playing 0.73 over par, according to point, I don't know, par three, but still playing pretty difficult overall. And, Big uh, numbers can accumulate quick on nine. Yes. And you can very easy big scores there dave setting a pretty hot pace actually after bogeying that first hole which was kind of a rough start he birdied the last five holes of the front nine that is a scorching great score uh for that part of the course and he's looking to carry that over in the back nine i'm really excited to check out this back nine and again thanks Zach, for having me and i uh, appreciate everybody yeah absolutely we'll see you guys in the back nine happy disking everyone